Welcome to another episode of The Real Health Builders. Today we're excited to share with you our tips and tricks on air tightness and vapour control. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So I'm here at our project. I've grabbed five minutes why the timber frame boys that were working upstairs to on the first floor, which you haven't seen yet, but you've seen these ground floor walls go up on the previous episode. So I've jumped in downstairs while they're not making a load of noise with the nail guns and I want to talk to you quickly about air tightness and vapour control, something that we take very seriously and for those of you that don't know, I actually have an interest in another, com uh, have another company that provide air permeability testing and consultancy together with other energy and sustainability related services for the industry. So we help support developers, architects, builders, self-builders, and we provide the advice. So rather uniquely as a developer, it's really great that I'll be able to sort of practice and preach what I tell others in our own homes. So I wanted to sort of use and share some of that experience. So I've been consulting on that for, well, since 2006. This video is what, now 2020. So a long time, wealth of experience. And that's one of the reasons that personally as a developer, I like timber frame. Now, as you can see behind me, the frames that we use come pre-insulated. So that's great, helps with, uh, helps reduce the heat loss from within the property to outside. But largely that becomes superficial, that if you haven't got a decent vapor control and an air tightness um, to your fabric, then to a certain extent, the level of insulation has become a bit superficial because when we look at air tightness, what we're trying to do is we're trying to control the environment within the home so that air is not, is, is not escaping the building and taking any heat with it, which in two, you know, two problems that can, that can create is that that heat within the property is more than likely going to hold moisture you know, in the winter months, it's going to be, you know, uh, there's lots of cooking and steam and drying clothes, all those things that are going to be hap happening within the building. And that moisture needs to, to get out the building. Now, if that's not, if you've got a vapor control layer or you've got a poor vapor control layer, you are going to be having all that moisture going into this timber frame, going into all this timber, going in, getting into all this insulation which you don't want because that moisture is going to sit there and rot and mould will grow and it's basically going to decrease the, the life that you can expect out of a timber frame. Now, also on a masonry build, you're going to have the same problem. You're going to have all that moisture going in, going through your plasterboard and soaking into your um, masonry construction and again, sitting there, creating mould on the backs of your plasterboards and just no, nobody wants mold in their nobody wants mold in their home. So for us, air tightness and vapor control are two very important things, and they rate more highly to me over the insulation. Because if you're not controlling that air movement, then it doesn't matter how good your insulation is. If it's bypassing it, then the insulation is helping, but it's 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 a waste of time. So I want to talk to you about the things that we do and the approaches that we have using the experiences that we've got that hopefully will be informative to you and help you make some decisions if you're you know, building your own property or yeah, involved in the design of a property. We wanted to share this with you um, and we hope that you'll find this helpful. So when we're looking at air tightness, we have got a couple of factors to consider. We have got you know, the fabric of the building, which in this case is timber frame. And we've also got large openings like this, which is a set of bifold doors. And then uh, over here, we have a window. You know, there's another kitchen window up that end over there. So we've got to think that, you know, the building as, an, as a whole, and that also includes, guys, that you've got the floor down here. This is obviously, we've still just got the block of beam floor, but ultimately, air will get in behind your plasterboard down into these areas you know you may think you may think that your timber frame is going to 
you know, prevent air movement, but ladies and gentlemen, it, it won't. Um, so you've really got to think about controlling that air, and that is largely done in timber frame. The most common way is that done with a vapor control layer. It's a, basically a polythene. It's a thin gauge polythene that is stapled usually to the, you, you, this timber frame up right here, the stud. Um, but, you know, it's then stapled, which is putting holes in those vapor control layers. Your services, I don't know if you can see, but this timber frame is, is set back from the face of this stud. Um, and this is what we call like a service voice. All the services are designed to run here. So let's just say there was a socket here. Those services are going to come down. If that VCL is in front of that, at the point those services need to come through to the inside of the property, they've got to penetrate that uh, vapour barrier, which means everywhere there's a socket or a switch or a pipe or a radiator tail or anything like that, that's all piercing that VCL. So moisture can get through those, uh, get through in those locations and ultimately circumvent all that effort that you put in in you know, 99% of the property that's covered in the VCL, but everywhere the polythene needs to overlap, that you know, this gets taped. I don't like polythene, DP, uh, polythene VCLs. To me, they, it's what everybody uses, but I think they're a poor solution to the, to the problem. And if you have any, uh, real understanding of the importance of controlling vapour and air movement, then I think, you know, it's quite simple to see that VCLs in their traditional polythene form are not the solution. So what is? Well, I just want to wind back a step and talk about why is air tightness, as well as when we look at, the, you know, the vapour control going through into the fabric, what are we looking at at air tightness? Well, the importance for air tightness is that you can have a well insulated property, um, you can have a great VCL and do its job there to you know, protect the, uh, the frame from, from moisture. But ultimately, if you've got uncontrolled air movement, that is the heat that you're you know, burning, you know, a fossil fuel or electric, depending on what heating method you've got, whether it's a traditional boiler, whether it's a, doesn't matter if it's a wood burning stove, doesn't matter whether it's an air source heat pump or, Anything special, you're consuming a fuel to produce that heat. Which ultimately, the more fuel you can consume is not good for the environment. Largely, you know, if you're burning any type of fossil fuel, gas, oil, anything like that, you're going to be putting uh, CO2s into the atmosphere. Now, we could all do without that. So, let's think about so that one, it's bad for the environment, and two, if you've got uncontrolled air movement that's taking all that heat that you've paid money to produce and burnt a fossil fuel or whatever the fuel that you've got, you've had to acquire that, you then, you don't want to lose it. So the insulation's great because that helps retain it and stops it going out. But if you've got poor detailing that is allowing free movement of air, it's going to take that heat with it. And then once you've got you know, a scenario like that, you've got that heat is going to carry that moisture with it. And that's then, when that heat meets with a cold surface, it's going to condensate. And if that's in the timber frame or out in the cavity, you've got problems. That's going to reduce, you know, what's the moulds in those situations? It's going to reduce the longevity of a timber frame. So air control is really important. So I'm not going to get into the ventilation side, because obviously with air tightness, you've got to think about improving ventilation. But I'm going to save that for another video, and I'll cover that another time. But what you've got to think of is air tightness is a good thing in helping reduce people's fuel costs and improving uh, home user comfort. So let's get straight into looking at good and bad practices. So, you know, up here guys, I'm gonna just insert some little common areas. You can see where we've got you know, the, where the timber, where the timber frame, you know, panels abut one another, you end up with gaps along the sole plates. You know, here we've got uh, the, you know, the joists, the joist zones where the joists go, sit on top of the timber frame. That's always a weak spot there. Uh, if I just, you know, up here, this is a shop with some steel work that's been incorporated up into the roof. 
you can see that there's sort of no insulation there at all. Uh, and it's, you can almost see daylight all the way through. So that's, that's a common area. And then, you know, back downstairs, we've got things, you know, in the ground floor, you can see the, um, the soil stacks. Everywhere there's a soil stack, you know, there's a penetration through that, you know, that floor construction, but it's a passage for air. You know, those are all areas that we can tackle with the, with the spray applied uh, membrane. So, you know, there's some common areas which are very difficult. You can't tackle them with, you know, VCLs. Uh, certainly not on the ground floor. Um, you know, the ground floor penetrations, you can't, you can't do that very easily. Um, you know, in the walls, the VCLs will help, but again, the VCL is, you know, typically can't get into all those nooks and crannies to be able to tackle those areas. All you can do is try and go over superficially, which, you know, is difficult, um, and you're never going to get all of it. So, that's, you know, there's some typical problem areas. Um, once the building's a bit more complete, I'll be able to show you more when we come to actually apply the product. I'll, you know, I'll, we'll have you guys in a future episode, we'll, we'll, we'll show you that in process. So it'll take about a day to just uh, spray this up, um, but we'll end up with a, you know, a great, great finished product with a you know, great air tightness. And then once we've got those windows in and we can dress the details and join the airtight membrane onto those windows, then that, you know, that's, gonna, that's gonna be a really, really great detail. But one big area often is you find is air leakage comes in around windows. So that's, that's, gonna, be, uh, that's gonna be good to show you guys. So let's talk about airtightness for a moment. And the methods and the techniques and the products that we may, may use as a solution, typically in house building. Well, we've already talked about VCLs, or polythene that's applied to the timber frame and how that, you know, it's accepted that that is a method, but, you know, you know in my experience and my, um, well, in my experience and my knowledge over air testing for since 2000 and 2006, I know that it's a poor solution to controlling air movement. So what you end up finding is those people are very much reliant, the VCL is behind the plasterboard because it's broken, it's not lapsed, and because, Largely, it's not seen. It's not given the respect that it should have as a VCL. So therefore, if it's not checked thoroughly and aggressively, it's never going to do its job properly because it's out of sight, out of mind. Now, what what you then got to think of is that the only way you can tackle air tightness is you're tackling it at a superficial level. You're looking at the plasterboard and going, well, well how do I stop air getting? through the plasterboard. How do I stop air getting behind the plasterboard? Because once it's behind your VCL, it's as good as outside. Because trust me, this timber frame will not hold back the air at the rate that is required when you undergo a test. So what does that, what does that mean? Well, it means that people, <coughs> excuse me, it means that people are then tackling the problem at a superficial level, oh, there's a hole in the plasterboard, I'll fix that. But the reality is you're gonna have holes and penetrations in plasterboard, it's unavoidable. And you can't, that's not, you can't do anything about that. Unless you're surface mounting your cables in front of your plasterboard, which is gonna look horrendous, which is gonna look horrendous, it's not a solution. So what we wanna do is try and push that air tightness barrier behind the surfaces because then we can control the amount of penetrations that need to go through that. Because if all your services are on the inside, how many, you know, what services have you got to get on the outside, in reality, are very few. Maybe the on outside light or an outside socket, but you can then, you can, um, that can be, you know, if you've got a cable going out there to an outside light, well then that's fine, you can seal that, when that cable comes down on the inside of your, 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 your air tightness layer and your VCL and goes through the wall, that can be sealed. You can't seal it when it's coming through this way on the socket because you can't seal the socket up. You can't seal the holes in a plug socket. It's gonna defeat the object of being a plug. So it's a lot, you can do a lot more with it when you push that air tightness and VCL barrier back. So the product that we use is a spray applied product that goes all over these timber frames. It's applied to the insulation, it comes up over the studs, it's sprayed into the corners, it goes up into the joist zones, it even can come around here and lap around these uh, window reveals so that when the window sits in, you can create a joint, you can create, uh, you can create a seal between 
um, the, the airtightness membrane to the window. So you can create a complete seal. We can even apply the product, we can even apply the product down the wall and continue down onto this block work up stand. We can even apply it along this floor. So we can complete a complete wrap on the inside of this building. So that product is going to stop air movement because you know air that can get in behind your plasterboard can get down behind the screen, down through your insulation, and get out to these areas. Because this isn't airtight, obviously. This is just a block of beam on a, over a suspended um, over the suspended ground. So there's airflow below here, which is meant to keep the you know suspended and keep that floor ventilated. But what you don't want is it to be a passage of air that can come in or out, take heat or, or, or the cold, bring the cold in or take the heat out, going into those areas because that's your uncontrolled air movement. So if we can, if we can, uh, sorry ladies and gentlemen, let me just pick the camera back up. If we can, if we can control, um, if we can create a complete wrap inside the building, that's great. And the product that we use can actually be used as a rain or protection barrier. So that actually, you know, that actually helps and provides a more uh, or a greater, greater detail of attention to you know a separate problem, which is rain on. So that, you know that that's a bonus. And you, you know, all your it's behind all your services, as I've said. So. You, you don't have to worry about your plasterboard being your line of defense for air tightness. Now, what I'm gonna do uh, coming up is once the timber frame guys are finished here, we're actually gonna show you guys start to finish of how that, what that product looks like and how it's applied. Um, and I, I'm gonna save probably the more technical information on that for another video. But I wanted you guys to really understand a bit more about air tightness and vapor control. And like I say, that product that we that we use is both an air tightness product and a vapor control layer. So you know, it's designed for passive houses. It's designed for very airtight properties. Um, but it comes at a cost. It comes at a pace of slowing down. But it outperforms a VCL tenfold. So you know, it's worth its weight in gold there. And to somebody like ourselves, where air tightness is a key consideration then that's why you can see why we use it so yeah you know, that's it for today you know thank you for watching thank you for um, taking the time out to check out this video don't forget if you haven't already to like and subscribe and until next time take it easy